He's the man with the mo and the larger than life commentary. Boy, oh boy, wow, wheeze. And the roaming mic. There's only one BT, and this time he's in the guest seat. That's next. Hello and welcome to Knock Off Sport to you by Pepper Jack Wines. Richo here and I am your host for 2024. So I've gone straight to the top. I haven't mucked around. I've gone out and got the captain of the Channel 7 commentary team. He won a Coleman medal at the Magpies. He played for the Tigers, my team. And it is great to have Brian Taylor with us today. BT. Good hey, to see how you. did you get this job? So you, you're I've just hosting up. everything. Come on, I'll get on with it. Over. What are we doing? Well, What's this show about? What have we ordered today, Brian? Well, this is a bit of Moroccan chicken, Richo, Moroccan with a bit of fig. Chicken. These figs are picked off my tree at home. They're really? ripening about now. Normally, they're a sort of Feb riper, right, right. but because summer's a bit later this year, we've gone them. Beautiful. And this is just a little bit of honey sort of uh, dash <laughs> of a thing. And you whack that on top, and they taste beautiful. Beautiful. This is a guy that used to have a fillet of fish on the yes, way to a game. Right. You've come a long way. Not one. Three fillet of fish <laughs> on the way. They, are, they were magnificent and still are. They are. We'll have a little bit of pepper jack with those a bit later on. Hey, Brian, uh, how have you seen the start to the season before we get into the serious commentary stuff? What, it's been a, a good start. Uh, just win loss or just anyone surprised you early? The Giants um, or the Swannies? The, the, the sides that have surprised me are probably Brisbane losing right. their first two because yeah. I picked them to win it. And I yeah. still think they've probably got the best list in the competition, so yeah. I think they'll probably uh, probably go OK. I think the other thing about the start of the season so far has been, you know, um, particularly with the Northern Clubs, record memberships, yeah. Yeah. record gate entrances, yeah. um, record crowds. I was reading a stat the other day. Craig McRae at Collingwood has coached, I think, 34 games now, of which nearly 50% have been 80-plus thousand crowds. Wow. That is That's huge. Yeah. I, I didn't think football could any, get any bigger in this country, but in the last 10 years, it's taken a giant leap. Yeah, it has. Hey, quickly, we're going to get into the commentary stuff because that's what you are the man at mm. these days. But I was a Richmond supporter. I loved you as a kid and Michael Roach, the twin sort of uh, set up down there. You would there. have been a Roachy lover, I reckon, because no, he was a nicer sort of yeah, person. Yeah, but I, but I liked you with a bit of the carry on. Quickly, why did you leave Richmond? I had your number on my back. Opportunity. Like you didn't have my number. I what a load Roach of nonsense. Roach and Taylor. <laughs> Look, Roach is a great guy. I still reckon he's the best full forward that I've played with, yeah. without any doubt. He was the best kick and best mark I've seen. Yeah. So I have great respect. I still speak to him a lot, um, even up until this day. And so I left for opportunity because he was still going so well yeah. in that. He had a bit of a back problem at that right. stage of his career, but he was still good enough and still having a, an impact on the game. And I just felt that. You know, unless I was prepared to have five years of not playing in that position, I was going to have to go elsewhere. Right. So, so did. an opportunity arose at Collingwood. They didn't have a full forward, and that was really why I left. I didn't want to go because I arrived at Richmond when I was really young, 16, and they were my family, and I'd grown up with Richmond. That's all yeah. I knew. Yeah. So I, I was reluctant to want to go, but I felt I had to. Well, you went to Collingwood. You mm. won a Coleman medal. You kicked 100 goals, which you remind me of quite yeah. Uh, yeah. regularly. Did you win a Coleman? No, I didn't no, win a Coleman. Not. But I played up the ground a bit more, as you know. <laughs> you had to retire young, though, BT. A lot of people wouldn't realise. I mean, you're only 27 or 28 when you retired. 28, I reckon yeah. I was. And that was because of knee. In fact, when I came over, I played my first year with Richmond from Western Australia in the under-19s. And I hurt my knee right. in the very first game. And that was that was transferred right through to my very last game. So you never played with a good knee? Never played really right. with a good knee. And they whipped the cartilage out on day one arriving in Victoria. And that cartilage from that moment not being there was obviously bone on bone. And by the time I got in my career at 28 years of age, I yeah. was absolutely knackered and have since had a replacement. So you went into media. You probably, you know, you got into it pretty young. You had to start at the bottom and work your way up. How did it come about? I started right at the bottom because I was a plumber before that. And uh, <laughs> that's not the greatest job, Rich. Eh? So I knew I, for 10 years being a plumber, I knew that wasn't what I really wanted yeah. to do. You didn't love it. I didn't love it. Yeah. It was hard work cleaning out people's block sewers mm, and stuff, Rich. As you can imagine, yeah. I'll, I'll take you on a hard day's work <laughs> one day because you've never done a day's work. But... Um, so that was really why I wanted to get out. Um, but in the media in those days, you know, everyone that was there, you know, the Jared Healy's and all of these guys, they were superstars. They were Brownlow medalists. Yeah. They were multiple premierships. It was EJ Witten. It yeah. was all of those guys. Bobby Skilton. Bobby Skilton. Yeah. And I didn't have that sort of resume. You yeah. know, I was a modest 140 games, hadn't yeah. really won anything from a team perspective or even really individually. And so I had to 
I had to get in another way, and that was prove myself in a time where coaches didn't want you to speak to the media. Yeah. I had to speak to the media to prove that I could do speak it. and yeah. do it. And that was probably, in the end, what got, got me the opportunity to be involved and went from there. I've been full-time now for well, well over 30 yeah. years. So people don't realise that. I mean, people see you on Triple M, killing it, you know, on a Saturday mm. afternoon and been doing that for a while. And obviously Friday Night Footy on Channel 7, the head caller at Channel 7, they're, they're prime jobs, but you had to work your way up to those, didn't you? Yeah, and it was about preparation for me because I wasn't the superstar player. And it was about hard work, you know, numbers. It was about doing my homework. Um, and I was a different caller from others. You know, yeah. someone like McAvaney or... Um, Hamish McLaughlin or someone of that nature is very um, analytical and yeah. statistic based. Yeah. I'm more emotion based. I'm more what I see is what I deliver. Yeah. And um, but underneath all of that, there was a lot of preparation because as a commentator, each year you're adding a couple of lines to your repertoire. Yeah. And it's about trying to have the right words for the right moment, the best describe it. Which someone like McAvaney, Cometti, Maguire, Quartermain. Smokey Dawson, and Harry Bites, all these guys were just yeah. artists at that. Yeah. Now, Roaming Brian, we all love it. Uh, how did the idea come about? It was really simple, Richo. Um, there's a guy in Formula One by the name of Martin Brundle, Tommy Guy, and uh, he used to get on the grid before a Grand Prix. You know, there'd be yeah. all the superstars, movie yeah. stars, Brad and Peter the, be down there. they'd all be there. And, and, and I was watching this one day, and he's got about five minutes to walk from the front of the from the front of the um, grid to the back. And he'd walk up to Tom Cruise, and Tom Cruise's bodyguard would put his arm there and say, no, you can't talk to Tom. Then he'd walk over to the head of the uh, um, Ferrari outfit over there, and he couldn't speak English. And, uh, and then some superstar, Mick Jagger, would say, no, nah, I'm not talking to you, Martin. And, and he'd get all the way to the end of the grid, and I'd go, he hasn't actually spoken to one yeah. person. Why, why am I... Why so intrigued? Yeah, why am I intrigued? Yeah. And I sort of worked it out that it wasn't about what was said. It was more about what was not said and the pictures. pictures. You know, I as a viewer was able to make my own decision about Tom Cruise. Why couldn't stupid Tom yeah. talk to him? You know, why couldn't that guy speak English? He speaks English. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, Mick Jagger, come on, Mick. One question to Martin <laughs> Brunley. He's the yeah, same yeah. country. He's your countryman. And I'm thinking, you know, I don't need those guys to speak. Yeah. All I needed to do, and all Martin Brundle does, he takes us on this wonderful walk of the grid. Somewhere we haven't been. Somewhere we haven't been, and we're seeing things in the back. Look in the background. Yeah. You can see such and such talking over there. Who's that? Is that that actor? Yeah. And I think it's the same with the footy to a lesser degree because we don't have the volume of superstars. But it's not about what I ask or who, even who I interview. Yeah. It's about what you're seeing at home in the background that's, yeah. that's intriguing and that perhaps you wouldn't otherwise get to see. Is it terrifying? Because there's, there's moments there where you've got no one around. Right, and you're just standing there with the microphone. Is it terrifying sometimes, or early days? Because you've got to keep talking. You've got to keep finding things to talk about. Yeah, that, that's hard because it, you know, they've gone anywhere from 10 minutes to 20 minutes, these yeah. segments. And yeah. you know, if I said to anyone, you're going to be on national TV for 10 or 20 minutes by yourself without necessarily talking to anyone, that wouldn't be great. But you sort of, you sort of get your way through. And when you go back and look at these things on replay, you don't have to talk because, once again, the pitchers yeah, are doing yeah. the talking for you almost. And um, the normal thing is to want to talk, but to, to, to just find different different stories. Like the other week, um, Connor Iden's, you know, yeah. dad and brother. You know, we didn't know about that. We just stumbled across it. So they hadn't seen each other for ten years. Yeah, is that right. And yeah. I thought that was intriguing. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking while I'm interviewing them. Why haven't they seen yeah, each other for 10 that's years? That's what everyone's thinking. It's very unusual. Yeah. He said, uh, you know, COVID. And I'm thinking, mm. yeah. And so I had to be careful because straight away um, alarms went off that, you yeah. know, it could be something personal. Yeah, And so don't want to dig too deep because this whole segment is not about getting anyone into trouble or or anything like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's starting to be welcomed a little more by clubs yeah. and players. They're starting to get it. Let's face it. You know, if you're walking around the club rooms plastered with sponsorship like Pepper Jack is here now, you know, plastered with sponsorship, that's good for sponsors. Yeah. And I don't think the clubs realise that initially. They but I think now. they're starting to realise that now. There's been plenty of funny moments where we're sitting up in the <laughs> box and it's almost awkward. What are moments. you doing while I'm doing it? So I'm we're, down there yeah. walking around. Are you guys on standby? Well we're, well, we're up on the set and, you know, we're watching you on the monitor. And if you get stuck or your mic blows out or anything like that, we're You're probably on standby. But right. we've been sitting there at times almost cringing what's going to happen. 
Is anything funny coming to your mind? That worries me. So you're cringing at what well, I'm going to ask? or no, what? just where you're going to go sometimes. Oh, well. Is there anything funny that you can remember? Look, I do remember, was it Dersma, Jamie Dersma? Xavier Dersma. Xavier Dersma yeah. in Adelaide um, after the game. Port and, game. Yeah, and he had his girlfriend there and he took me over and introduced me to his girlfriend. And uh, I think I said, I can't remember exactly what I said. It was something like, um, you know, did he do something special for you today? And um, he said, yeah, he picked me up from school. And I, and I've, you didn't know where to go. I didn't then. know where to go from that point. And, you know, she was obviously 18 and yeah. that was all good. And, and, but, you know, yeah. you sort of back out of that situation as quickly as you got into it because yeah. you're just not sure where that's going to go. I remember another time, David Armitage, remember him? Yeah. He played at St Kilda. Yeah. He was out with a hamstring and um, he had his suit and tie and he was standing next to three or four other guys that had suit, St Kilda ties and suits on. And he said, I had a ripper day at the footy though today and I'll be back next week, Brian, that'll be great. But, you know, I had a great with all my mates here. And I said, well, introduce us. Deathly Didn't silence. <laughs> and they were board members and I don't think he knew their names. So he'd been so, sitting with them all day. Yeah, so you yeah. can get people into trouble yeah, if you're not yeah. careful as well. So there's the good and the bad. Yeah. Um, but in the end, it's, it's meant to be harmless. It's meant to be fun. And it's not, it's not 60 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, just a quick one, Brian, before we uh, wind it up. The grand final, how do you get to call the final siren? Because surely when you're sitting there with James... <laughs> uh, you know the answer to that. Do you just sort of look at the clock and go, there's a couple of minutes left, I'm going to hog the call right to the siren? No, you don't do that, Richo. But look, the, the little bit of individuality in us all says that the most... The moment that is kept the longest in history is the last 30 seconds yeah, of the call. Because whenever you refer yeah. to the 22 grand final, they'll replay the last 15 seconds. Yeah. So with about four and a half, five minutes to go, you're starting to think if we do 30 seconds each, which is what we do roughly, you know, you're doing the numbers in your head and you're thinking, I might end up with the last 30 seconds, which is great <laughs> in a close game, it's exciting. And then with three and a half minutes to go, you're starting to think, I've definitely, and two and a half minutes, you're starting, what you're doing, you're fudging 10 seconds here, yeah. going 10 seconds longer or shorter to make sure to make that you sure end you up with it. it at the end. I'm yeah. not sure JB's sort of... He's you know, no, on. he's, he's kept cotton on with it. <laughs> no, look, it, it just works out. Yeah. It's just absolutely pure luck. 30 or 40 seconds each, yeah. one passage of play, yeah. and then we, we change. Some right. people go longer. Some go for two or three yeah. minutes without changing. Yeah. All right, last one. Three dinner guests. Anyone in history who are you inviting down to lawn for well, dinner? Well, Michael Jordan, for sure, yeah, being Michael. my all-time sporting hero. I would have said Greg Norman a few years ago, but he's just gone off Take a little. Off a bit. Gone off. So I'll say, um, let's say um, Max Verstappen, right. not because I like him, yeah. but probably because I don't like him, right. and I want to find out what he's want really, what he's really, really like. like. Um, and maybe throw in Pat Rafter, great yeah. tennis player, great yeah. guy. Yeah. He's the sort of guy you want wherever you're going out for dinner. Yeah, anyone you wouldn't invite? Well, probably you, if you don't <laughs> mind. You know. Well, you know what? I, I see too much of you anyway. I wouldn't want to come. Well, so I don't, don't want you. I don't want you to come. I don't want to come. No. Hey, Brian, we've got to wind it up. But there's a little bottle of uh, Pepper Jack. Oh, this They're is everywhere. nice. Yeah, this get this is world famous Pepper Jack. I love yeah. it. We love you coming in today. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Richard. There you go. Well, that's it for this week on Knock Offs. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for joining us. Looks good, Bristol. Mm. Yeah. Good fix, yeah. Beautiful.